Here with reaction, Fox News contributor Kellyanne Conway, along with Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee and Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer. All right, Governor, am I right? Am I wrong? Is, am I missing anything? Should, should something be added, subtracted? You tell me. Well, Sean, first of all, when I come on your show, I never say you're wrong. Why would I do that? I'd never get invited back. That's so I'm not, not true. stupid. But Ari and no, Kelly no, no, no. tell me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. And, and one of the things that you talk about that I totally agree with is that we can sit around and say, oh, we wish the Democrats weren't doing ballot harvesting. We can do that or we can play the game that's being played. And that's how you win. And we need to win. But we also need to go into state legislatures where Republicans have majorities across the country. And we need to make sure that the voting laws are passed so that they truly do make it easy for people to vote, but truly do make it hard for people to cheat. That's not something that uh, has been a forefront. The, the fact is, Republicans are really good at campaigns. Democrats are really good at elections. And ultimately, you don't get into office if you don't win elections. Your campaign ads and uh, all of your ground game and everything is wonderful, but it's about winning the votes. And one thing that I do want to say, Sean, and I hope some of my fellow Republicans will listen carefully, quit blaming some of these candidates for what happened. It's easy to do that. And are they perfect? No, they're not. But you know something? They had the guts to get their name on the ballot and go out and run for office. So I was proud to support Herschel Walker, went to Georgia to campaign with him. I see some people now that, you know, are trying to say it was all his fault. Well, maybe it was Mitch McConnell who didn't put enough resources in early on. Maybe it was all of us who didn't help him enough. But I thought Herschel gave it the best shot he had. This is the first time for him. But for people to complain about him, I just would say that if you think you can do it better, in two years, there's another election. Get off the couch, put your name on the ballot, and go out there and show us how it ought to be done. All right, Fleischer, let's get your take. Well, number one, it's not as bad as people think it is. Yes, it feels bad that we didn't win as many seats in the House as we thought we were going to win, and we should have, and I wish we had taken back the Senate. But for two election cycles in a row, Republicans have gained seats in the House. We gained seats in 2020. We gained seats in 2022. We've taken over the House of Representatives. In 2018, the first midterm under President Trump, while Republicans lost the House, they gained two seats in the Senate. Nobody is remembering that Republicans gained seats in Trump's first midterm in the Senate. So it's a mixed picture. Really, America right now is yelling at the politicians and yelling at Washington to be moderate and centrist. This is why everything is 50-50. If both polls and both parties demand to have everything their way and their way only, they're at a place where their America is right now. There's a reason that things are so close down the middle. But the final point I'll make, Sean, is mechanics are always important in campaigns, but candidate quality is essential. Good candidates will win. And the big issue for Republicans still is who is our leader, who's the candidate at the top, well, I will who say has this the best opportunity to bring people in. Uh, Herschel, I thought, was a good candidate. I know people disagree with that, but he got outspent in the runoff about three to four to one. He got outspent in the general election by an equal amount. Uh, that makes a difference. Money in politics makes a, a, yeah. a pretty big difference. Uh, one data point, Kellyanne, that I did forget, and that is that Republicans, in terms of we, we never win the popular vote, we actually won the popular vote this election cycle. Yeah. So it tells me that the ballot game that the Democrats are playing is a very different model than what we're used to seeing. Every model that we've used in the past, go to the fair, you know, kiss babies, shake hands, take selfies, do rallies, all of that. That seems secondary to, you know, look at Katie Hobbs or, or Joe Biden, for that matter, or Fetterman, for that matter. Yeah. These guys hid in their basement. They did no media interviews. If they debated, it was at the end, if at all. They barely showed up, never had to answer tough questions. Uh, and they raised they a ton won. of money, and they dumped negative ads on Republicans. They didn't campaign traditionally. Yeah, so, Sean, a couple things. I actually think we can simplify this by remembering a couple of tried and true tactics. One is you got message messenger delivery. I think the Republicans had the better message. We're the party talking about crime and rising costs and, and physical, financial, national and border security, answering people's concerns. 
a messenger. We had some pretty good candidates out there. Some of them came up short. Some of them were first-time candidates. I hope they run again. But delivery is the point here. Delivery is no longer do you have the American flag behind you, are you wearing a red tie or me a pink dress. Delivery is a system, not a style. I need to deliver those messages through those messengers where you live. I can't expect you, the voter, to come to me. So if you're accustomed to getting it by text or, or a phone or email or on a social media app or through a friend or a family member, that's the key here. What Democrats were able to do in Georgia and elsewhere is what I call connected tissue politics. They basically said to people in your circle of life, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your distant acquaintances, make two connections with people. One is, do I like you? That's a classic living room test. Number two is more important. Are you like me? What do we have in common? And then you're able to say to people, aha, you want to vote for Herschel Walker over Raphael Warnock, because after all, Raphael Warnock has voted 98% of the time against the things that you just said are important to you. So you want to go with the guy who's standing up and speaking up and putting up and showing up every day on the campaign trail, Herschel Walker or Republican X, who's out there responding to your concerns. The other thing, at the end of every speech I give to Republican audiences, I say the following, let me share it with the audience tonight. We have to have a seven second version, a 70 second version, and a seven minute version, depending how long people will listen to us. Why am I a Republican? How are the parties different? Why does your vote matter? And then we need to bank these votes early. We're taking a big chance somebody can get off of work, out of the house, out of traffic, not feeling sick that day. If you can bank their votes in October, let's do it. I don't like it because it's pro-incumbent. I don't like it because it's not election day, it's election season, election trimester. But these are the rules. You either adapt or die as a party. And we can do this. We can absolutely do this. But I tell you, our message is, I think people are saying we need a new message. Let me just say something respectfully to the 49 Republican senators. Where were most of you? Why weren't you in Georgia? Few of them were. But they all should have been, gentlemen, because they should have been there at some, in some form, a teletown hall in person, saying the following. I serve in the United States Senate with Raphael Warnock. He's a terrible senator. He doesn't represent Georgia. He's not fit to serve. He votes with Joe Biden. He voted for Inflation Reduction Act. It doesn't do that. He said nothing when they pulled out of Afghanistan. He said nothing that Joe Biden's been to Delaware 174 days and down to the border zero days. That's what needs to happen. Where were the other senators to say, I want Herschel Walker, not Raphael Warnock, in the Senate with me? All right, last question, quick answer from all of you. Ari, we'll give it to you first. What is the one big recommendation you would give the Republican Party in general? You cannot win with a base alone, but base alone. You've got to win with a base vote that also has appeal to centrists and independents. It's a big party, a big tent. It's very Ronald Reagan. It still is valid today. What do you think, Governor? Tell the people what you're for, not just what you're against. It's real easy to say we're against uh, various radical things. But tell the people what you're for. What are you going to do that makes their lives better when they sit down around the kitchen table at night? And by the way, Ari, you are right about don't underestimate the power of Republicans the last two election cycles, winning seats in the House and now having the majority. Last word, Kellyanne, what's the one big piece of advice? I will adapt, adopt what my two colleagues said, and I'll add this. Grab the votes when you can. There were really low points for the Democrats and for the Biden administration while early voting was happening, and I think Republicans heard from some candidates, wait for Election Day, let's surprise everyone. The only people surprised on Election Day were the Republicans. Get those votes as early as you can. Well said. Agree with uh, all of you. Great advisors. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.